So welcome to the most northern point in Britain. You think the Queen is old at 95 years old, but you should look at Wick on a map and see where this football club is. And um, yeah, you will understand why it is such a remote football club. Manager in his own right, general manager, kit man, physio, and in his 60s apprentice, groundsman. Now he's getting to grips with a role he never expected to have as club chairman. This club must mean a lot to you. Winning the trophy on our biggest rival's ground was, <laughs> was a, an extra treat. 360 mile drive. They're ones that I need on my bucket list as well because it's not just the big boys in football that I love. I love coming to see these places and we've just heard from the chairman as well. So welcome to the most northern point in Britain. I am currently the most northern vlogger. There's a couple of bird watchers behind me, so I can't say that I'm the most northern person, but just check this out. Of course, I will be going to the most northern football club shortly. I've been to the most northern SPFL club, Elgin City, before. I'll be going there in a few days as well, actually. But yeah, today I'll be going to the most northern football club that you can basically find. Highland League team, Wick Academy. I've had numerous people ask me to come here, requests to say, come to Wick, when I've been to Brora before. And yes, today is finally the day that I'm going to go to Wick Academy. We are currently now closer to the Faroe Islands than we are to London, the capital of the UK, of course, somewhere out that way. Faroe Islands and about double the distance that way London but yeah despite a few uh, obviously people here to uh, check out the most northern point of mainland Britain it is um, obviously so remote here that I think all the footballers who play for Wick Academy the team that are like 10 20 miles down the road all come from this area as well so yeah it'll be really interesting to investigate yeah how they have players up here and uh, yeah how the team operates but I hope you enjoy a few of these shots and the next time I see you it'll be at the football stadium I lied, the next time you see me won't be at the football club, it's here, but look, I am on the way, I'm like 20 minutes away, and look at this, mad to think there's a football club around here. Portugal has just gone on the green list or whatever for travel, but travel is gonna be so hard around, you know, Europe at the moment. If you're in the UK, why not get down here for a bit? Why not come up to the Highlands or get to somewhere near where you live that you've never been before? I've never been here, and this is amazing, I mean, I love to travel, I love to travel abroad, you'd know that if you've seen a few of my older videos on my channel and to think I've never been here before, unbelievable. Go and explore the UK if you can. Now, if you're from England or even Glasgow or Edinburgh or somewhere in the south of Scotland or the north of England or yeah London or anywhere across Europe you might think Inverness is quite remote you might think the most northern SPFL club that I've ever seen Elgin is pretty remote you might think that Brora is quite remote the most northern club I've ever seen but you should look at Wick on a map and see where this football club is and um, yeah you will understand why it is such a remote football club and why every single one of the current squad comes from the Caithness area. It's called Wick Academy because the first ever captain was apparently a local teacher. And actually, I need to tell you something about this pitch. I think there is a nine foot difference between the highest point, which I'm on now, I'm not sure if the camera will be able to pick it up, and the lowest point. It is a complete slope. If you were kicking that end, you'd be a lot happier than kicking up this way, let me tell you. They joined the Wick League in the 1890s and won that title 17 times. They were successful in their localized Wick League and Cups and in the early 1900s, they joined the SFA. You think the Queen is old at 95 years old? Well, Wick predate the Queen by, yeah, a good few decades. They're 128 years old. They are just one year younger than Liverpool FC. And uh, yeah, this club has been around for a very, very, long time. Amazing to think actually that such a remote team in such a remote location has been able to sustain itself and carry on for so long. Testament to the people of Wick for keeping it going. I'll just read out something that I've read online. So Pat Miller's connection to Wick Academy goes back four and a half decades. 
In that time, he has been goalkeeper, player manager, co-manager during the club's first season in the Highland League, manager in his own right, general manager, kit man, physio, and in his 60s, apprentice groundsman. Now he's getting to grips with a role he never expected to have as club chairman. This club must mean a lot to you. A lot. I've heard, well, I didn't realise at the time that I was going to spend half my, uh, more than half my life here. Yeah. No, I, 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 enjoy, I enjoy the football part yeah. of it, obviously. I tried to stay out of the boardroom as long as I could, but circumstances, I think being retired, uh, sort of pushed me into, into, into the, the committee room. But to bland as chairman was just... The final piece in the puzzle, yeah? yeah? You've been yeah. everywhere now, you've had every yeah. single role. So, um, being in such a remote place, how does Wick Academy, the football club, help in the like general community as well? Well, what we try to do is, and, and ever since I was involved in managerial wise, is we, we uh, try to uh, bridge, bridge a, a gap between uh, a youth systems, the summer systems. Uh, so we are always looking to progress people through our youth teams, watch them in the, uh, when they get a wee bit older, and then try to get them back in. Uh, Great. So. And we were speaking just before, um, and that's quite an important point, I suppose, about bringing the youth through, because every single player in the squad currently comes from Wick or the surrounding area, yeah, is that right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we, we've been lucky in one respect that uh, Ross County take quite a lot of uh, youth away in their teens, but nobody ever gets signed by Ross County, so we get a guy that's been sort of half-schooled. Yeah. Uh, and, he, and he, the biggest part of it is, is the heartbreak of getting dropped by Ross County but trying to take these guys on because they're all, you know, they're skilled. We, we've always had good players up here. And they've got the dream of playing for Ross County and being in the SPL yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. It's hard, there's so many young players, I suppose, and not enough positions to uh, be able to be filled. What we've found is that uh, we encourage, you know, we encourage the kids to get that experience. Yeah. But we're always, I, I back our head thinking we'll go get them back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, hopefully a, a wee bit more school. Yeah. Wick hold the record for the longest ever distance travelled for a Scottish Cup match. They played St Cuthbert Wanderers away in 2008 and it was about a 360 mile drive. It is down near Annan and near Gretna and near Stranra down in Dumfries and Galloway and I think by looking on Google the average journey time is around seven to eight hours. That is absolutely insane. But yeah, it makes sense that a team like Wick would hold the record for the longest ever distance traveled in a Scottish Cup match. Have you heard of any other long trips like that from around the world? I guess there must be some in Russia where you might have to go from east to west or whatever. Have there been any long ties in England? I guess some of the longest would be, I don't know, yeah, Newcastle to Exeter or something like that. Any that you've heard of, let me know in the comments below. Current manager Gary Manson played here for 21 years and amassed almost 700 appearances. And yeah, like I say, every single member of the current squad are from this area. And yeah, you really don't see that a lot these days. Of course, the uh, Lisbon Lions, they're all from Glasgow, weren't they? Celtic's famous European Cup winning team. But yeah, it makes sense that a team like Wick would have players just from this area. How are they gonna attract players from the central belt to come and play here? How will they get foreigners to come up and play here? But um, yeah, I absolutely love the way that it is just the people of this place. I guess all the supporters are from here, all the players are from here. That's proper football, isn't it? This video today is sponsored by Fanbase. Now, Fanbase, you may have seen in a couple of my videos, have sponsored them before. And what they're doing is revolutionizing football at the level of teams like Wick, specifically teams in the Highland League as well. They've uh, got Brora as well as multiple other clubs within the Highland League. And uh, yeah, with talks ongoing with other clubs as well. But basically, through their app, you'll be able to get ticketing and content and digital programs and loads of other stuff um, that will help you keep connected to your favorite club. Club. For teams like Brora, Wick and others in the Highland League and a yeah, growing number of clubs around Scotland and the UK, Fanbase's software is helping them to manage the safety of fans on match days by capping ticket allocations and making the whole operation contactless. At the same time, Fanbase are enabling instant digital payments for tickets and subscriptions, which is great for the cash flow of clubs like this and means that the club can start to build a database of fans to grow their contactable base. And yeah, for clubs like Wick and stuff like that, I'm sure it's hard enough just to keep going. I'm 
just spoke to the chairman and they've obviously found it tough here to keep going with the restart and then the tightening of restrictions and opening up and stuff like that. So yeah, to have a digital presence is important and uh, to have someone manage their ticketing system and all stuff like that, it's great what Fanbase are doing. And uh, yeah, I really hope that they can uh, yeah start working with more clubs in the future because teams like this will really benefit from having them. But yeah, all of their information will be below. The first link in the description box will be to their website. Go and download their app, follow them on Twitter, Instagram and their social media pages because because uh, yeah, they'll be updating through there when they get new clubs signed up or when their software updates and all that kind of stuff as well. So, uh, so yeah, go give them a follow and uh, I'd really appreciate it. Cheers. So my last question, a lot of people I suppose watching this video might be from around the world or whatever may not have heard of Wick Academy before. What is the um, greatest achievement this club has ever had? I think to start off with, uh, previously when you used to qualify for a Scottish uh, Cup, uh, you had to play basically four rounds in the Highland League before you qualified for the, the first round of uh, the Scottish Cup. So the Scottish, getting in the Scottish Cup uh, for the first time, uh, and no one to bomb my, my own chat, but uh, it was uh, when I was a manager. When you were manager, and then here's um, a picture of you as a manager here as well, with Hamilton, right? With Hamilton, that was... Hamilton Ackies? Yeah. In your managerial days? Our, obviously our, our, our biggest success, uh, I'll, I'll actually show you Yeah, this. cool. It's uh, when we won our first time in the trophy. North of Scotland Cup. Oh yes, I read about that online. 2015, 16 yeah. was it? Yeah. Well, it was a strange one because it we actually held the cup for about 18 months because it was so late in playing. <laughs> but, but that was uh, that's that's sort of been our biggest success was actually winning. We were in the final three times before, but we never we never ever won. Oh, always the bridesmaid. Bit of a always Leicester in the FA Cup. Yeah. yeah, and then they've just won it recently. So yeah. that was uh, on a November. In fact. Part of that is champagne, but I think if you look to the side, some would snow. I was going to say, yeah, it looks a bit snowy there, but yeah, that could be the champagne spray, they, I suppose. They actually cleared the ground of snow. That was in Brora. Oh, right. So they cleared Down the at ground. Dudgeon Park, was it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, which, winning the trophy on our biggest rival's ground was, <laughs> was a, an extra treat. Yeah, well, Arsenal have done that at White Hart Lane before as well. Yeah, and now you've got Wick doing it at Brora as well. Yeah, so... Amazing, cool. Well, thank you so much for showing me around. It's no, great. No problem at all. Who would have thought you come all this way up to Wick, the most northern club. And you need your sunnies. I mean, look at this place. I feel so lucky to be here right now. You lot know how much I love football stadiums and exploring new ones. And um, yeah, this has been on the list for a while. And yeah, you may have Barcelona on your bucket list and Bayern Munich and Dortmund. I certainly did have some of those before I saw them. And uh, yeah, I've never seen Dortmund or Munich or whatever, but they are still on my bucket list. But to have teams like this on my bucket list, the most northern in the UK or, you know, the most southern or the oldest like Sheffield FC, they're ones that I need on my bucket list as well because it's not just the big boys in football that I love. I love coming to see these places. And we've just heard from the chairman as well, some great stories that he's told me off camera as well as the ones I asked him about on camera as well. So yeah, absolutely great guy and uh, great to chat to him at this brilliant football club. And look at this, I'm back in Inverness now. And uh, yeah, look, there is the River Ness. And this is the amazing hotel that I'm staying in right now, which I will tell you about in a second. But yeah, what a day I've had so far. Um, I've actually been to Brora and filmed a video there. This is the Wick video, of course, that you are currently watching. And uh, yeah, I've been to the most northern point in all of mainland Britain. I have visited the most northern SFA club, Scottish Football Association club that there is in Wick Academy. And uh, yeah, what a club that is. I mean, you don't get more unique football stories than that, do you? A team of fully local people all just working for the 
betterment of the club, I suppose, and for the community as well. As you would have seen from earlier on in this video, I had an amazing breakfast which set me up for the day and uh, yeah, it got me all the way up to the most uh, northern point and back basically with a couple of snacks in between, but that's pretty much all I've had all day. And it was at here, and it was here where I had that rather, at the Glenmore Hotel. I did actually stay here last time I was in Inverness uh, for when I was filming my last of the 42 SPFL clubs. I visited Cali Thistle and Ross County and Barora actually as well, but yeah, I actually stayed here and um, I loved it so much. I got in contact with them and told them I was coming back and um, yeah, they kindly allowed me to stay. They've invited me back and uh, yeah, it's an amazing, amazing place to stay right in the heart of Inverness. As you can see on screen just now, the rooms are so spacious. The rooms are amazing and we've got a river view here as well, so it doesn't really get much better than that. The breakfasts are tremendous. They've got the waterside restaurant as well and when they say waterside they really mean it and yeah I wouldn't be coming back and recommending it to you on my channel if I didn't think that it was good and something that I would use myself that goes for anyone who uh, or anything that I really speak about on my videos so yeah if you're coming to Inverness because international travel is so hard at the moment on the radio today they were talking about like 170 pounds just for one test to go somewhere and 170 pounds test to come back if you're leaving the country and international travel is so hard you've got quarantine lists red lists all that kind of stuff now is honestly the best time to explore the uk if you haven't before if you've never been to inverness come up to inverness stay here at the glenmore they have service departments and proper hotel parts as well so yeah honestly come up to inverness and stay here it's right near the city center go and do some highland ground hopping like i say and uh yeah you won't be disappointed the staff here have been so welcoming so and i'm so thankful thankful for that they've been so great to me please do remember to smash that like button and check out fan base they're doing some great stuff with clubs up in the highlands and uh yeah all around scotland and england as well coming soon hopefully so yeah do check them out for give them a follow or uh, have a look at their website download the app and uh, see if they've got your club on there as well because um yeah when fans are coming back they're gonna do some great great stuff and they're gonna make it so seamless for you to go and watch your favorite football teams please hit that like button and subscribe if you're new and let me know where you want me to go next if there's any other clubs that you want me to visit uh that are in in the highlands or anywhere around the uk as well i will get there look i've just been to the most northern i've been to sheffield fc the oldest um yeah let me know some other weird and wonderful clubs and uh, i'll do my best to get there i'll leave some videos around my head as ever so you can keep watching my content thank you so much for watching till the end i really really do appreciate it cheers and i'll see you in the next one